I'm not in prison because I didn't differentiate the staff from the inmate population. I treated everybody across the board like they were human beings. So when I did did deal with a staff member, a sergeant, a lieutenant, or a captain, I showed him no more respect than I showed the dude who had the same same kind of sentence I had, or maybe a lesser sentence. I didn't I didn't show any differentiation, and I got ridiculed for that. And the system is set up to break you in a way where you should carry yourself like you don't matter. And if you do that, then they feel like, yo, we know where you are. We know we have you. But if you if you can if you can at least appear like you holding your head up when you're really not, that stood out. And I was ridiculed for that. And sometimes I was ridiculed for that because I was a northerner and because I had an accent and because of the way I walk. And when I got my legs back up under me, I knew I was a fighter and I wasn't going to succumb to that. And then they would use different tactics to try to to try to try take that out of my head and my heart. Like, you know, you got a natural life sentence, right? You know, you, when you're in prison, you have a case manager. And you see that case manager once a month. And each month, the case manager sits, spends a few minutes with you telling you how you can best do your time. You can go to school, you can get this kind of job, blah, blah, blah. And my case managers would sometimes remind me that I had this natural life sentence. And they would look at my reaction after they said that. And when I recognized what I felt some of them were trying to do, I would sit up straight and say, yeah, I understand that. And then they would move on to something else. And a part of the psychology of prison is to break you mentally because if they can do that then they have you every in every other way man uh what is uh what else did we want to ask you um yo this is unbelievable man that i'm sitting here right now man. do you have any um did you have like who's the most inspiring person like i watched this movie called south central and I've never been incarcerated, so I don't know. So if I keep referencing movies, it's just I'm trying to relate. But there's a movie called South Central, and the guy that made it through his name is Bumpy Johnson or Bobby Johnson. And OG Bobby. Johnson. OG Bobby Johnson. Yeah. You need help taking down Willie Manchester? Just call on <coughs> Deuce. All right. So he uh, he had this. He met one person in there that was inspiring. That that was like, yo, kept on and make sure he kept staying on the right path, kept telling that he could get out or the possibility. Did you have anybody in there that was kind of inspiring to you? Yeah, I received those inspirations in phases and stages. Um, there was no one single person inside that kind of gave me that. Mm -hmm. um, I learned so many things uh, by default. I learned how I didn't want to carry myself through observing how other people carried themselves or how other people dealt with themselves while incarcerated and I've seen them deteriorate mentally and I've seen them have to get on medication just to make it through the day because their sober minds couldn't deal with it no more it eroded mm. and I used to say to myself wow there go I if I don't find another way I'm not above them and I don't know what they had been through while in prison to even experience that you know when I first started doing my time prison was ultra violent man. you've seen a lot of I mean I believe I might suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder I've seen so much violence man brutal and you, you see anybody get killed absolutely killed raped uh, bludgeoned see I don't know how does how do people die I, I, I know it happens but how do people die you think it's a safe like they got security well you, you got to think if you have a prison that that holds a thousand men you might have 200 to 300 officers that are watching over a thousand men. And it's almost impossible to, to ensure the safety of anybody. How does anybody sneak into the White House? You would think that would be one of the most secure places in the United mm -hmm. States, right? But people still some kind of way get over the gate and get pretty close. So prison, you, you got to think, prison is a place where people appear to be on guard. But it's a, it's a, it's a, it's the house of pain, man. And hurt people gonna figure out how to hurt people in prison. You find the human ingenuity, how the mind can be so creative to do something. You would think how prison, how can somebody escape from prison? And I've been in eleven different prisons, and they seem like it's it's impossible for somebody to escape. 
but people still figure out how to do it. So, if you want to relate that to the violence in prison, people can sitting still enough in prison and taking the time to think about how to harm somebody. It comes easy to you mm. if that's what you set your mind on. Because this all it takes is a split second. All it takes is for that officer to have to go use the bathroom. Or sneeze. Or sneeze. Or sneeze, yeah, real sneeze quick. one, two, or many times. Or fall asleep times. on his post. Mm. They're human beings. And they do that. So you, you talk about violence. And we're, if you listen, guys, if you, I see the, if you guys have a question, ask it now. We're about to turn this off. You'll see the rest of it because my phone is actually about to die. You'll see the rest of it um, later. Um, talking about violence. You know what's going on in Chicago right now? Yes. They said it's like 730 or something like that people in 2016 got murdered. Right. That's like two people a day. What do you think? Like, if you had an opportunity, because I know you do a lot of good stuff. You talk to a lot of groups right now. Absolutely. Like, if they put you in a room with all the gangbangers and all the, the young folk, the old folk, the OGs, and they say, hey, Will, we want you to come and speak to all of these people like what would you what would your message be to them well uh, like you said at first I do a lot I do motivational speaking I mentor teens I do personal training I said all that to to say that I'm always interacting with human beings and in a hands-on way and I have talked to gang members OGs I've been in prison with them mm -hmm. I've been in prison with some some real shot callers and it takes a certain skill set to to realistically connect with people at a place where they respect you and and you have some kind of credibility with them. And once you establish that credibility, and people will tend to listen to you. And for me, unfortunately, we live in a society, once I say I did 24 and a half years in prison, I'm vetted. I'm, I'm, an, I'm an OG if I choose to be. Mm -hmm. They ready to label me and give me the flag and the stripes just because of that. That, that gets saluted. To come out of prison with a sound mind, have done no snitching, just done your time, man, off the rip, man. You you already saluted, man. You a solid dude, man. I don't know how you did it, but you a solid dude. I don't I don't run around with a banter for that. You know what I mean? I don't glorify that. That's just my story. However, when I'm if I was in that position to talk to anybody, be it one person or a group of guys. That were living their lives in a way that, that directs them toward prison or the grave. I would probably do way more listening than I did any talk. Mm. Because I think we got a story to share. So nobody, you you feel maybe people, they're not listening nope, to They're them. not listening. Uh, they're going because like, hey, let's bring Will in to go talk to these people. And, and I am, and I am needs to go sought in and out listen. that way. Okay. Like, yo, Will, we got a group of people we want you to go talk to. Mm. And I received the inv invitation in the spirit of going to talk to them. But the shock fact is that when I get there, I do way more listening than I do any talking. Mm. And then that's when... Damn, that's, that's when that, That's good. That's when truth is born and, and a camaraderie is established when you go to listen. Because everybody's story is different. Everybody's not in a gang for the same reasons. Yeah. They're just not. They got way different circumstances. But if you listen, you can conclude that and then you can tell or make what you want to say for this guy or for that girl. But when you go in wanting to do all the talking, yeah. nothing gets done. It's like if a doctor, <clears throat> if a doctor, you go into a doctor and he's doing all the talking, he can't find what your okay, problem yo, I, is. I, I, doc, I didn't say my leg was hurt. I yeah. told you it was my shoulder. So he's got to ask you questions like, oh, what's going, like, what's going on? Yeah. All right. How did that happen? Why did that happen? All right, yeah, I actually like that. That's out of all the questions I see on CNN and people trying to figure out the the, the cure for what's going on in Chicago listen, and anywhere else. Yeah, they need to bring your boy Will in. That's good. You you listen Absolutely. to them. Uh, let me get this real quick. How did you? Um, how long has we 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 did that? How long has he been in jail? And how long has he been out? Oh, how long have you been out? I've been out thirteen months. Thirteen months. He's been out thirteen months. How many innocent people are in jail? It's, it's not a very high, high percentage, mm -hmm. but there are some innocent people in prison. I would say, I would say, ten to fifteen percent of the people that are incarcerated are dead innocents. Innocent, innocence is such a, is such an ambiguous expression. What do you mean by innocent? Most people in jail 
have committed an offense the size of a notebook. But the, the sentence that they get or receive as a consequence of that is the size of a skyscraper. So in my mind, that person's innocent mm. because justice was not served. The crime is the size of a sheet of paper. Absolutely. The court system knows that. The individual, the perpetrator knows that. However, the sentence is the size of the building that manufactures the paper. That's not justice. That's innocence to me. I live with guys like that. That say, yeah, man, I'm guilty of this. And I can live with myself under that pretense. However... The courts didn't do that. They didn't sentence me in accordance with what I'm guilty of. That's more painful than anything. And just as painful as somebody that's 100% innocent. So that's my way of answering that question. That was good. Um, oh, we got to, we're really about to hang, uh, cut this off. It's going to cut off on its own. Your skin is like, on a scale from 0 to 100, I don't know if they can see this, <laughs> but his skin is like, it might be even better than mine. I don't know. But that's I, I attribute good skin to a good diet. Okay. Did you just get, the past 13 months, did you just get this? Or? Well, nah, I've been in the, I've been in the fitness, fitness exercise and <clears throat> holistic health has been a contribution to my sanity in such an insane environment because once I decided that I wasn't going to die I had to approach living in a holistic way mm. so I could be healthy enough to where if I ever did get some relief I could live a healthy life post incarceration so my diet um, you had a diet in there? yeah I, I modified one I created one by simply not choosing to eat a lot of the processed foods that they served um, getting my quality rest. You know, people have this idea that prison preserves you. That's bullshit. Prison don't preserve you. The stress of prison will eat you alive like any cancer, any diabetes, or any ulcer. What preserves you is a healthy mind. And a healthy mind or healthy body will follow. So I had a regular regimen of, of the kind of materials I read, the quality of rest that I chose to get, and the, the exercises that I chose to to take on as a regiment. All of those things work together to preserve somebody while they're in such a stressful, tense situation as incarceration. But people want to say prison preserves you because you haven't been out here with the wear and tear. You want to switch places? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you, I don't, you don't get a break in prison. Mm -hmm. You don't get a weekend off. <laughs> you don't get a Christmas holiday. You don't get that in prison. It's non-stop every day. Mm -hmm. The stress of that will kill you. And I've seen it literally kill people. Literally. So that's a that's a myth. That's a misnomer that prison preserves you. It's, it's making a dogmatic commitment to taking care of yourself. Despite being surrounded in such a dismal place that's full of death, man. Yeah. Yeah. Daily. And that takes such a great sense of self or self love to do that Robert? Mm -mm. to do that despite that environment so uh, jeans great jeans my mother has beautiful skin my sister does too and keeping my stress level to a to a minimum I'm a spiritual person so I filtered a lot of my toxins mm. through my faith and I'm not ashamed to admit that my faith also carried me when I couldn't carry myself man and I'm, I will admit to you, man, I couldn't carry my sins. I'm not one of them dudes that thinks they so tough that, yo, I, I handled it. I just handled it because I'm just like that. Nah, that's not my story, dude. I, every piece that helped me handle it, I needed every piece that helped me handle mm. it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's good. That's good. 